live a webinar on lead acid battery safety. My name is Liz and I'm going to be your host today. On behalf of Mental Health Team, I would like to thank you for being part of this event. Today's webinar will be presented by Dr. Kenneth S. Wenberg. Dr. Kenneth is a PhD and is an independent consultant in environmental health and safety. Kenneth has consulted for several companies in the areas of OSHA injury and illness reporting, as well as auditing for OSHA inspections. He has worked as the Director of Safety at Mass General Hospital in Boston for almost 12 years and has written several books on the topics of healthcare safety, OSHA, and indoor air quality. He has also written several articles for prominent national safety publications and serves on the editorial advisory boards for safety publications. Also, he has been administrator of the healthcare division of the American Society of Safety Engineers and is a member of several panels that, that advise on safety-related matters. We are honored to have a, such a distinguished person such as Dr. Kenneth S. Wenberg with us to present this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, I would like to inform you of the program outlined for today's training session. This webinar is for 60 minute duration. First, Kenneth will take you to today's webinar highlighting the area that will be covered, and he would then share with you his presentation. I would also like to inform you that all participants, once they're part of this teleconference, they have been placed on mute, and it will remain so until the Q&A begins towards the end of this session. This is for the purpose of avoiding any kind of discontinuity and also allowing the presenter to speak clearly so that everyone who is present in this session can take maximum benefit. I also request all to hold back your questions until the Q&A window begins. Ten minutes of time will be allotted for the Q&A, during which your questions will be answered. Ladies and gentlemen, if for any reason you get locked out of this training session of the teleconference, I request you all to follow the same procedure to join in again. Now that we are all ready to start, I request Kenneth to take it from here. Kenneth. Thank you. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I know it's a tight time of the year because of the holidays coming up, so we really appreciate you uh, joining us. Now today we're going to talk about uh, leg acid battery safety. And um, let's see, I, for some reason the machine skipped here, so let's see what we can do. I apologize, we're already in. Okay, the presentation today will uh, allow you to understand the basics of lead acid batteries, recognize the hazards associated with lead acid batteries, know how to work safely with these batteries, and what protective measures are necessary uh, when working with uh, lead acid batteries. Um, I'm going to show you a picture now, and uh, as soon as I can get this to, okay, and uh, these are all items which, uh, some of them are work-related, couple, um, and one of them is uh, mostly pleasure-related, unless you're in the Coast Guard and sweeping for uh, drug runners. But these all have in common the fact that they all run on the lead acid battery. And here's just a little um, picture of what, what the general lead acid battery looks like. And you can see that there's a positive terminal, a negative terminal. Uh, there are cell connectors um, uh, running from the positive terminal. There's also the vent cap, which are the covers uh, which you can locate um, if you go take a look at any of the uh, lead acid batteries that, that, that you have, uh, including mostly in your vehicle. Uh, there are positive electrodes, there are negative electrodes, there are cell dividers, uh, there's uh, obviously, it's not in there, but you see where the electrolyte solution uh, goes in, which is a dilute sulfuric acid. Uh, typically mixed in water, and then of course the protective casing, which uh, you know holds everything together. 
and hopefully works to prevent the corrosion. Now, lead acid batteries are everywhere. Uh, they're in forklifts, they're in power trucks, they're in standby generators, they're in cars and in boats. Uh, a lot of us deal with them um, in forklifts and power trucks, uh, but also in, in, in standby generators, um, especially if you're in a, uh, in a, for example, a healthcare setting or any, any place that has to be able to switch over to emergency power uh, as a backup in, in case of uh, bad weather and the, and the energy runs out and you have to keep on going. So uh, you can find them uh, almost everywhere. Now, lead acid batteries uh, contain uh, lead plates immersed in a solution of acid, and uh, it's the solution of acid that really creates uh, the electricity for you to work on. Um, and we'll look at that in a minute. So the leg acid battery has the leg plates, which I showed you, uh, and they're the electrodes. Um, in today's battery, they're really a combination of leg and antimony, uh, not just pure, pure leg. And then the plates are in an acid solution, and the acid solution is the, an electrolyte solution for all of you uh, chemistry aficionados, uh, and that's what transmits the electricity uh, through the battery. Pretty simple when you think about it, and um, when you're in your chemistry courses, uh, wherever you wherever you took them, you probably set up a solution uh, to transmit uh, electricity using a simple setup like this. Okay. Now, what are the hazards that are associated with lead acid batteries? Well, believe it or not, there's uh, hydrogen gas, which is emitted. As part, as part of the process of, of the electrolysis, which is what happens when the electricity is generated. There's sulfuric acid, uh, which is in the, in the mixture. Um, you also have a potential for being shocked, and there's also uh, a problem with how heavy the battery may be. Uh, some, of the, some of the batteries may be very, very large and may, may present uh, um, a hazard of uh, ergonomics or uh, some such thing. Okay, now I don't know why that went backwards, and I'm trying to figure this out. But okay, now statistics on injuries. Uh, it, it's interesting. I, I mean, when you do uh, injury and illness reporting uh, in a lot of places, that uh, you know people look for the slips, trips, and falls. Uh, but I don't think people generally are aware of injuries associated. Uh, with with um, working with lead acid batteries, um, and every year in the United States, about 2,300 and these are from the U.S. Department of Labor, by the way, these statistics. 2,300 people are injured using lead acid batteries. Half of those injuries are burns to the face and eyes uh, because the batteries have exploded, and the rest are due to uh, Injuries from lifting the batteries, usually to the back or the neck or the or the upper arm. So uh, it's about a 50-50 split. Um, and uh, I think to me, the explosion one is the is is kind of the scariest. Okay, moving forward. Yeah. Um, now, <clears throat> a lead acid battery is really an electrical storage device. Uh, that uses reversible chemical uh, reaction to store the energy. Energy. Uh, the sulfuric acid is about 35% of the electrical solution of the uh, of the electrolyte solution, and the usual diluent, the thing that you dissolve that acid into, is water. Just uh, usually distilled water is the best way to go because it's purer. Um, you know, you, you could use tap water kind of in a pinch, and I'm sure that that's what happened for years. But uh, tap water really has a lot of uh, con potential contaminants and minerals in it, which could actually affect the operation 